More than 250 people are dying unnecessarily every single week in hospitals in England because of long waiting times in A and E. The shocking new figures released by the Royal College of Emergency Medicine found that almost 14,000 people died unnecessarily in 2023. The NHS recovery plan sets a target for March of this year to ensure that 78% of A&E patients are to be admitted, transferred or discharged within four hours. But that target has not been met. In fact, one and a half million patients had to wait for more than 12 hours in major emergency departments last year. The long waiting times have been blamed on insufficient funding, resulting in too few staff and not enough beds. So... Uh, obviously, this is a Tory story. You can pile on the Tories about this. I mean, I find this obviously massively, massively frustrating. I find it frustrating not because of reasons of funding, but because of reasons of reinventing the wheel. Uh, it surely is well known in terms of looking at the data or whatever, how busy an A&D de A &E department is over periods of time. We know, for example, in winter, perhaps, people with flu or falling over on icy pavements. That's what you're going to get coming into your A&E department. You can probably work out in a given area how many accidents there are going to be. The inability to staff A&E departments properly is one big problem which I can't get my head around. The other issue is about the role of GPs and so on. A lot of people now, frankly, go to an A&E department with a routine uh, complaint which they should be going to see their GP for and they can't get appointments with their GPs. What is going on with GPs? GPs would say they're overworked, they only have five minutes per patient, so they don't have enough time. Why are we not reinventing how we do healthcare? Why are we not doing more consultations on Zoom or video links with people who can uh, access those kind of things? Why are we not getting more nurses and more pharmacies to do diagnostics? You should be able to go into your pharmacy with a proper, with a routine complaint and get some advice and help. All the regulations are completely out of date. I find this whole situation so annoying, but I don't think it's just down to money. OK, this is about the failure of our national health service at every level. And like you say, this is very much about prim the, the failure of primary care, the fact that you can't just get medical... You know, you can't see somebody. You can't yeah. ring and get an appointment okay. in the way that you should be able to. It's also about things like the cost of living. People are ending up in A&E because they are... I don't know, cold in their own homes. They're getting sick on their own. There's, there's a failure of social care. Elderly people who actually need other care are ending up in A&E. It's also about sort of drunk people going to A&E and abs the absolute failure of the system. You can't pour more money, you can't pour more billions into the NHS. It's about management and organisation and it needs root and branch reform. But it, but it is, but then why are we looking at symptoms? Because we all would recognise and say, you've got to look at the cause. And I think we all know anecdotally or from experience, that trying to get hold of a GP's appointment or using your pharmacy effectively or using technology effectively is really difficult and it seems not to make sense. So as Ed correctly says for once, <laughs> a lot of people are going to A&E needlessly, which is then putting a burden on that service. In addition to that, of course, we've got a, a health service where the government seems to be inept at being able to deal and recognise that there's been a cost of living crisis when it comes to sorting out pay and remuneration. I actually don't think this is the government's fault. I know I love to, it's, it's a sport for me to, to, you know, pile on the Tories. However, I feel like when we talk about the NHS, genuinely, it feels like this country has been lobotomized because it's the <laughs> definition of madness. We keep trying to do the same thing over and over again, and we're surprised. Oh, we don't we don't get to see our doctors. The A and E results are terrible. Let's have a healthcare system that remove the word NHS and just focuses on patient care and clinical outcomes. There is absolutely no reason for us to be treating this institution like it's it's sent from God when it's failing us on every single level. I agree. I always, I always draw comparisons so with I. Portugal because it, it, so it blows my mind that we pump more money into the NHS than Portugal's GDP. But it's become, but it's become deified, the hasn't it? same results. Well, the thing is, people wouldn't care who they're getting their health care exactly from. Exactly right. If they, if they got better clinical outcomes. If they knew and that we have this sterile debate in this country about NHS privatisation. You are absolutely Right. Uh, say it again. Say it again. I didn't hear. What, what is this that? This sterile debate. No, no, no. Esther's right. Say it again. Oh, sorry. Esther uh, is. No, no. I'm never saying that again. No, no I, I can't. To... I can't. I can't bring myself <laughs> to say Esther is right. I agree with Even James. Even though I am. I agree with James that I think you know. Who agrees with me? People don't care where their care comes from. The point is, it's affordable. You don't have to pay for it. 
and it's quick and it's efficient. And yeah, but the problem you have so, with the, the problem with the NHS is it gets 200 billion quid a year. Uh, it chooses to spend a, a great amount of that money on things like diversity. Offices. I knew you were going to say 3,000. I don't agree Well, it's with a fair Kevin. point. 3,500 middle managers who aren't medically qualified yeah. earning more than £100,000 a year. I mean, I think you don't think that's a waste of no, money. No, I do think you need people to run things. That's, like, like, that's, like, saying, that's like saying you can only put on an award-winning show like The Talk with the presenters and not uh, the producers. Excuse me. How many chief executives of, for example, Bupa are there? There's a clue. There's one. How many the NHS, the NHS are? Well, because is the NHS There's is one. devolved, there are There's so many chief, chief executives and who is of that? the NHS. Because every single aspect... Amanda no, something. sorry. Every single aspect of the NHS. So you have a head of the NHS, but then you have heads of this oh, part. Oh, please, That's no. The, the whole part. middle I'm management sorry. thing is completely wrong and it's a total Why? red herring. Why? It's about the structure of the NHS. So Correct. Why are there 3,500 people it's earning more than that? Because you read the Daily Mail. That's why the three and a half thousand You were doing so well when you agreed with me and then you became editor. It's the safety. Anyway, moving on now, moving on, moving on.